Hello, happy Wednesday. How are you doing, Victoria and Janet? Whew. First, I thought I had all this time to get ready, and then suddenly I had no time left. I'm still trying to figure out the best place for my face, but oh well, larger than life today. Uh oh. Uh oh. I will be right back here. I don't know what in mine is doing this. Oh dear. Let's see. Can you still hear me now? Let me know if you can still hear me now. Hey, Mona. I muted my own computer while I try and find the other thing, but let me know if you can hear me. Trying to find the tab that was open that was giving me the sound, and I don't know what it was. Not on this page. Oh, maybe it's on my big Chrome page. Okay, you're hearing me. Okay, good. Then I'm not going to worry as much about it since I have no idea. I have no idea what one it is. All right, now I've lost my other screen. Why is there always something, right? We never get just a nice, easy little, you know, let's just start going and have fun. It's just always something. All right. Hey, Brenda and Mona. Well, in the beginning you could hear me and then suddenly my um, there's something playing in the background and I have no idea, I can't find the tab that it's playing on because, you know, that would be too easy, right? It would be too easy if we could automatically find. I didn't think I had anything else up that could possibly be making any sound. But, you know, there's always something hiding. There's nothing there. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm just going to pretend like everything is funny. You see both screens. You see... You should see me and and the and my sewing. Do you see something else? Yeah, I figured out the echo. Um, we had to get a headphone adapter to put on my iPad Pro. So Janet, when you say you see both screens, hopefully you see me and you see the stitching stuff that I'm gonna do. Okay, so I solved the echo. I have no idea what was playing in the background. And um, I'm just going to ignore it since we quieted it. Hi, happy Wednesday. <laughs> oh, life is always an adventure, right? How are you guys doing? Brenda, how are you doing? Mona, how are you doing? I don't know if Jude will be with us today or not. She's got some stuff going on. Oh, I'm leaving crumbs. And... Uh, yeah, that's what you should see, Janet. You should see the stitching on the left and me on the right. Yep. Okay. When you said you saw two screens, I thought maybe somehow I was going through all my um, my tabs. Hey, Beth, how are you doing today? You know, it's just there's always going to be an adventure, and I'm just going to have to roll with that. So I needed something easy today because doing the, the videos yesterday and then having the power outage and having all the other stuff going on, it's like, okay, let's go back to this and see, I've been good. I haven't been working on it when I'm not with you guys. I was going to, and then I thought, you know what? I can do another one. Um, I'm just not gonna, I need a not stress day because when I am done with the live, I need to go out and try and gather up all the things from the outside studio that two days worth of crazy winds have blown all over the place. I walked out before I came on to take a look and see what it was like. And, oh, it made me sad. I mean, I'm very grateful that we didn't have trees. Or, well, we lost one tree, but it was just a small one. We didn't have branches and things come down. But all the lichen, you know, and lichen is small. <laughs> all the lichen I had collected um, is scattered all over the yard. Leaves that I had saved because they had holes in them and I was going to do something with those. Hey, Lala. 
those are all gone. Um, bits of wood and bark that I had collected gone. So I need to just accept that like this kind of work, it's all ephemeral and I'm just going to, I'm going to not, I'm going to try and not let it bug me. So I'm going to make myself go out after this and, and work on that. All right. I need to decide on here and hopefully you guys saw the the thing with my little tea bags. This is like, I don't know, this might be my favorite. So if you want to stitch on leaves, definitely coating them with something makes a huge difference because when I, um, let's see these right here, these were so thin. Hi Debbie. And I just put a slight coat of matte medium on them and let it dry. You know, when I did the other stuff on the leaves on the tea bags and they held up just fine to the stitching. So that, that's a pretty good tip. And everything dried with the matte medium and then dabbing it with a paper towel, um, it doesn't look all plasticky like it does when you, when you can coat things with glue. Yeah, too many names to type, for sure. And Janet, I know you are at work, so you will be in and out. But I need to decide what I'm gonna how am I going to stitch these. Uh, I'm going to do something pretty easy to start. Um, you could probably, you could coat that. I mean, I've coated leaves with beeswax before. I don't know how that would hold up with the wax might crack a little bit because when I have done like an eyelet or something on something after I've coated it with beeswax, you can get the, um, you can get the cracks in them. But this is just matte medium and it is a very thin coat. You could use Mod Podge or you know white glue, PVA glue, whatever, and then just take a paper towel or rag that's damp and kind of dab it afterwards so you don't have a really thick coating. And I don't know if you can see, see how well this one will focus. Actually, it'll probably focus better if I put it over here, if I figure out where my camera is. It's got a few, you know, you can see the edges of the glue around the stitches, but it's not bad. Hi, honest, honest, Annis. Well, Lala, I have to do simple things to craft and chat. <laughs> You'll notice the other videos lately are, well, they're voiceovers for the noise factor, but stuff like this has to be simple. And I, you know, I think it's good because the, um, the stitching needs to get done and it is time consuming. So it's a good way for me to feel like I'm connecting with you guys without taking, you know, too much time away from everything else that I want to do. So I haven't done anything yet with the project we did last week. Oh, this is the wrong needle. This needle is way too thick. Oh, well, we'll do, we'll do it while I have it threaded. But I have not forgotten. Um, I have got the pages of that book. What I did is I, I did more with the jelly, um, not the jelly rolls. What are those things called? Gelatos. And I did the gelatos all over the pages. So I covered up all the words. And that's as much as I'll tell you about the secret project that may or may not work. I mean, it may all just like fall apart. We'll see. But I, all the pages have been covered with gelatos and waiting for me to have time to do the next phase. Yeah, Debbie, give them a, give them a try coating them with some matte medium um, or, you know, something that you have gluey because it really, uh, they, it was a joy to stitch on them. I wasn't anywhere near as worried about them breaking so I'm going to, because when I did these for the video yesterday, well, the last couple days, what I hadn't realized is that um, I did three of them with the same leaf, which is fine. Hi, Nettie. But I think I'm going to use this one in the book, and I'm not sure about, you know, the others I'll save for something else. So I'm going to do some more. So tell me what you guys are working on today. Who's doing what? Who is doing what? And we will have a slight sidebar if Tanya is able to join us, because I know she's also like Victoria. She's in the UK and she's going to try and join us. And she had a couple of questions. So if she gets a chance to come in, I've got some stuff to share for her. I'm trying to figure out 
I mean, I don't want to do a video every single day, but for a little while, I'm going to try and be pumping out a few more videos, really trying to get people to remember my channels there. It's uh, when you have so many subscribers, but so many few people that, that come to view it, feel a little bit of pressure. Hey, Martha, how are you doing today? Hope you are having an awesome Wednesday. Fussy Cutting Magazines. I used to really love that too, Debbie. It was very relaxing. And then I ended up with such a huge pile of them that um, I realized I wasn't going to use them up. Hi, Maggie. I am just going to do some very simple slow stitching because I need something to relax. <laughs> because I, um, I need to go out after this and I need to collect up all the stuff that the windstorm blew off the deck. I'm hoping that maybe, you know, on the plus side, it brought down a bunch of acorns because I could use more acorns. I'm good, Martha. I am good. I need to probably do some brainstorming with you later, though, or tomorrow. One of the two things. I have homework to do, and I'm beating my head against the wall. Maggie, your um, lace piece that you did last night, oh, my goodness, that was so gorgeous. I always feel bad. I don't get to hang out, you know, as long when you guys are crafting in the evenings because it's our dinner time and then the TV goes on. Well, Nettie, the cover of your planner looked absolutely beautiful. Martha, are you working on some more of those ephemeral, ephemera folios or are you doing something else today? Oh, and now we have the sound of the chainsaw in the background. I had to open up the doors and windows because it was kind of warm in here. And uh, we have lots of people that are needing to do chainsaws because of all the trees and branches that came down with the storm. Well, out of our comfort zone is good, right, Maggie? I mean, you've been really stretching yourself lately. For me, even just doing something like my teabag things, you know, on camera when I don't have anything planned is super out of my comfort zone. Honest, all I can tell you is that I took the book, uh, we, we brainstormed the word, words in, and I took it and I covered all the pages with gelatos. I was trying to use up my gelatos. I really, I don't use them. I want them gone. And they're not in good enough shape that, that are worth handing on to somebody else. So I'm just, um, hey, Tanya, I just want to use them up. And that's as far as I've gotten on it. So when I get to the next step, I'll show you the next step. Okay, sidebar here, because I know Tanya may not last the whole time here. And she had a question. She had several questions. Your question about beading, um, I'm going to have to save, and I'll, I'll post you a little video in the group, Tanya, about um, beading, because I just didn't have time to pull that together. But she had asked me about the different things that I collect to put on my little, on my clusters like this. And so this is just a piece of muslin that I had dyed and then my tea bag, my redwood. And then in here, there's some um, pieces of jute string and some lichen and some sari silk. So here's, I have this one of those three tiered rolling carts um, that's right near my work desk. And I keep bits of a lot of this. We were talking about wool roving and this is how it comes. If you look up just wool roving on Etsy. And so it's before they spin it. Oh, frozen shoulder. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay, Terry, we're going to shake you out of your funk. But this is the, the roving, Tanya. And it's just, I think it's the wool that they've carded it, but they're not, they haven't spun it into anything yet. And I get, I bought a bunch on Etsy and then a friend of mine sent me a bunch. And I, I love this because when you pull it apart, you know, you just have these little tiny bits and it doesn't take much to put on a cluster and add, add a little bit. And of course, although there's regular cheesecloth, there's stuff like this that I got at the dollar store. That's just um, cotton netting. Yeah, I just break it up. I tear it so that, because when you first cut it, let's see, here's one that's got some, um, 
Okay, it's got the straight lines and I don't like that. So you can just pull it around and you can glue it or stitch it. That kind of thing. And this is, um, a friend sent me this. This is another kind of uh, fiber. I think you get at the, uh, some of the stuff you can get at the dollar store at Halloween time when they're putting out decorations for things like, um, the, this was for like pirate ships. So it's like cheesecloth, only the holes are a lot bigger and it's cotton and it takes dye really well. And of course the cheesecloth and all the different sizes. And then, hey Lori. Yeah, a bit like cotton wool. Lion's mane, yes. Um, this is just, this actual piece here is from um, a plant hanger, one of those <coughs> macrame plant hangers. And this is one of my favorite things to use because once you pull it apart, you get all these wonderful layers. And then I just try to, <coughs> when I put it on, on something, I try and cut it at different lengths. Yeah, it, it feels a lot like one of those cotton dish talk ta uh, dish cloths. And the weird Halloween netting. So this stuff I can't find. Um, I didn't find like recent years, but I had that in the past. It was like over for doing pirate ships or um, seashells. In the summertime, they might have it in the uh, seashells section. And then this last year, the fibers that they had for making spider webs was um, something else. It's just a, a, hi Sharon, you're here early, yay. It, it was like a real, it's a weird acrylic thing and it takes, shoot, I don't know if I have a sample of it here. It pulls apart like, oh, I do have some here. And you probably won't be able to tell because it's a small thing of it, but it comes in a bag at the dollar store at the Halloween time. And it pulls apart like wool roving, but it takes dye and does this, interesting little clumping thing. So you get a lot of different textures and flavors from it. So it's definitely something to play with. And yeah, the, the string, um, raffia. And again, you know, it comes in the, the bigger strips, but you can split it. You know, you can't really uh, shred it, but you can split it into thinner fibers. Um, anything pretty much can be split. I brought this out to show you. This is just good old cheap knitting yarn but once you start tearing it apart you can get all these different you know links from it and you can just keep tearing it and look at how how fine that gets tear a bunch of this that's just that cheap knitting yarn if you can so you get some really nice fine textures by doing that you can also do it with um Cooking the cooking string. This is just cotton string. Let's cut a piece of this. Oh, that's a good idea. And probably the party stores as well. Ah, yeah. The when hubbies are home. So this is just the cotton baking thread. And you can dye this, you know, of course, dye it with any of your little inks. It's a little harder to shred but you can kind of get some, you know, thin fibers on that. Yeah, string is great. And what else? Um, this is something I'm, this is not cheap stuff. This is something I got on Etsy. Uh, I think this was from Victorian Gypsy Girl, but this is banana fiber and you can look a lot of places sell it. But because it comes, I love it because you've got like thick pieces of it and then thin pieces of it. And then you can tear it again into different pieces. But this is banana fiber. What else do I have in here? Um, this is wool slubs, which is another thing to look for on Etsy. And they come literally in just these little pieces like this. There's not much to them. But because they're the slubs that get, you know, I guess they, they pile up like the scraps for the wool, the people that are making wool. You know, I go in spurts. Sometimes I keep them in tubs. I love these little containers that I have because they stack. And so periodically I will bring things out of the, the main studio and stack them into my little cart. Um, don't forget dryer sheets. We all save dryer sheets, right? Or baby wipes. 
These are baby wipes actually. And so they've got the color on them from the paint. Yeah, the banana fiber is awesome. So this is a just a baby wipe, but once you start tearing it apart and spreading it, and I love this, you can you know get the holes in it. And that adds a really great texture. What else do I have? Of course, you know, twigs. You know, and the thing is, you don't need a lot. I mean, this is a cinnamon stick. So once you start breaking that down to put on your clusters, it doesn't take very much. You don't get dryer sheets there. Oh, well, and I don't use them because most of the ones, uh, my mom was saving them for me, but I realized they had a smell that gave me a migraine, so I couldn't use them. But you might... Um, Baby wipes, like I said, they, they work great. Hey, Lorna, you snuck in. I didn't see you. Uh, twigs. Um, now, I saved pine needles, and I have tried these. You know, a lot of your, um, any of your conifer trees would, would have these as well. I saved these. They do break, so I'm going to try coating these with um, some matte medium, and I bet that'll make a big difference. Oh my goodness, Brenda, you never thought of keeping dryer sheets? Wow. I just, I love them. And then, you know, baggies of threads. I put all my threads whenever, you know, if you cut a fabric and you're fraying it and the threads come off, I um, put them in a baggie. Some of this I wish I had not taken off years ago. I had taken a bunch of silk thread off of spools, which I hadn't done that. When you can go to the thrift shops again, this was a, um, oh, and your, your burlap. I mean, you can shred your burlap just like you would the jute. This was an old placemat. And so, you know, you can cut it and cut it this way. Hey, Midge, you made it. Yeah, you look at all paper differently. Yep, and paper towels. So piece of old placemat, but then as you start to pull it apart, now you've got different things that you can do stuff with too. The sheets make really great bases for journal covers. You know, if you just glue them all down to your base and then you can collage on top of them. And so every time I pull this apart, you know, now here's another kind of thread. It's not quite jute, jute but it's all gonna pull apart for me eventually. I think my favorite find has been this old macrame plant hanger, though, because it's just really, it frays up so nicely. So see, I can get more fraying from there. What else do I have over here? Of course, the sorry scraps. I guess, I guess that was about it. You know, and then I save all my little bits of fabric that I cut off from anything, and then I shove those down in my paint water. Hey, Carla, welcome. Happy to have you join us. So does that give you some ideas, Tanya? Yeah, I know. Burlap to pull apart is awesome. All right. Now, speaking of baby wipes, I sort of need one. Uh, let's see if I got something to... Now that I have green from that dryer sheet all over my hand. Yeah, eventually they learn, Midge, don't they? All the stuff that we want to save... <laughs> My husband's awesome. Before he throws anything out now, he brings it over and says, is this something you could use? And he's gotten very good at knowing what kind of things I could use. My trouble is in the yard. I, every time I walk through the yard, I want to save something else. And I don't need to save it all. It's my backyard. I can go out there whenever I want and get more. Ooh, Lorna's working on Edith Holden journals. All right, so back to doing, and I will do the beading little thing for you, Tanya, later. I just couldn't manage that before coming on today. Good, good, yep. You'll be looking at stuff differently. So Brenda said she had a meeting the other day regarding the kids' art program. You went from two of the art to three. Oh, yay. Hi, Penny. That's exciting. So hopefully that will help you stay motivated, right? Let's 
Victoria, you threw away three Amazon boxes. Yeah. <laughs> and your husband wanted to take your temperature. I love it. I know I, I saved things for a long time. And then you start looking at your welcome, Tanya. You start looking at all the stuff you've saved. And it's like, you know, some of the stuff can go, especially if it's stuff that I know I'm going to get again. Like for a while, I was saving the um, Band-Aid boxes because they were just a really nice size for a base for a mini book. And I realized, you know, we're always going to be getting new Band-Aids. I could save a couple of those and keep tossing the rest. Lala wants to know if I bring in things like Spanish moss, do I worry about little critters? Um, you know, I tend to bring things in in stages. So I bring them to the outside studio and kind of let them dry out. I've heard you could put them in a plastic bag in the sun for a while to hopefully kill things off. The problem with that is then you have to worry about whether you're going to have mold that comes in. Uh, some people heat them up in the oven for a while. Um, I don't know. I just kind of, you know, look for that. I mean, I don't bring in wood that's uh, still very um, wet, that hasn't dried out yet. So I let my wood dry for probably like six months or so before I bring it in. Hey, Mitzi. Happy Wednesday. So happy to see you here. One is the culinary, the other is giving the kids a paint gun and designing their name and spilled paint kind of thing. And what is the third one then that's most exciting? Yeah, Victoria, if it's stuff that you know that you're always going to have more of it coming, I have kept a few boxes that are perfect um, shipping boxes for certain sizes. Yeah, you know, the lichen and things, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I guess I just sort of let it go. <laughs> we haven't had a problem with bugs. Um, oh, yeah. Now, if you have an issue with spiders, you definitely have to be careful about that. You might want to coat it with something. I don't know. You'd have to ask Mr. Google. Yeah, if you could make, make an income off of selling your used Amazon boxes, that would be something. If they're ones you don't have to do a lot to and you could, um, you know, make some quick book uh, journal coverage, you know, just cover the things. Hey, Adele, you were able to make it today. So happy to see you. I have something to show you, Adele. Adele, look at here. It's in progress. Brenda said you were telling them about the leaf pounding and flowers. Oh, great. So you're going to do that with them? That's awesome. I'm so excited. Victoria, I saw your thing about the spider in the bathroom. That was not cool. I love my spiders, but they need to be outside. Um, the, the lacy thing, Tanya, yes. This is like the covers I did in my uh, recent giveaway for hitting 5,000 subscribers. And so uh, Adele wanted one like that. So I'm working on her cover. <laughs> you still sure you don't want to pick a color? It's so relaxing to work on that one, Adele. Yeah, you're teaching them to be resourceful. Absolutely. Sharon said she got a parcel the other day from Amazon that wasn't in a box. Oh, no. <laughs> you didn't get much joy with the leaf pounding. Interesting. Hey, Abby. Hi. I'm waiting for the rest of your reveals. Yeah, my last few things from Amazon have come in paper envelopes. It's very interesting. Okay, Adele, so she, she doesn't want to pick a color, so I'm not sure. It may end up being green because you know me. <laughs> you know me. I will see. I'm just going to see. Whoops, I made a mess on the backside. Story of my life, right? Mess on the backside. Oh, well. When this is all done, nobody's going to see the backside anyways. 
Carrie. Weren't her bundles amazing, Abby's bundles? If you guys haven't seen it, Abby, who's Purple Cottage Crafts, she did a really great um, video that showed how she put all her bundles together and how she gets all those juicy papers and fabrics. So you need to go check it out. And then as soon as uh, we're, we're all kind of sitting here waiting impatiently to see all the reveal of all the stuff that's um, been unwrapped and dried. So I was thinking I was going to try and get to some botanical printing this week. I hope I can do it, do it maybe tomorrow if I've got the energy, because we may actually have, um, <laughs> Brenda, yeah, backside's always a mess, right? Um, we may actually have rain coming next week. At least that's what they tell us, I hope. <laughs> Lorna says, I wear a long sweater so no one sees my backside. Yeah, I wear long, long shirts for just that reason. Um, Allie does not have a channel, but she's around all the time since she's in our group. You can certainly ask her. Um, those of you that have joined the group, we've got some really great things happening there. And if you're not in the group, I hope you will uh, take a look. There should be a link down in the description box for Poppiness and Friends on Facebook. But she did a really, um, she did a great job on that little mini one. And I've been watching, um, shoot, Kat Giglio. I can never pronounce her last name. She's got this one of these wonderful Italian names. Been re-watching a lot of her old mini book videos. She's got a great simple twig binding, which I think is the same one that um, Kathleen shared in our group. Grain wet for you. Well, we haven't, we normally we would have about 15 inches of rain by this time of year. And I think we've had like maybe five. So it makes me very nervous because of course the fires will come back again <clears throat> in the summertime. I can hear Victoria telling me hydrate. Hi, Shauna. Welcome. Happy to have you join us today. How are you doing? <laughs> Brenda. <laughs> so I've been trying to decide what form I want to use for my little, um, my, my tea bag things. And I think I'm going to make just a very simple concertina book with perhaps a not so simple color. Oh, um, yeah, she's got look for Sharon. It's called mini. I think it's called mini twig book. And it's old. It's like a couple years old. I think it's wonderful. At least a year old, maybe two years old. She's got a whole series of mini books she did, but her twig book was very simple and very elegant. I loved it. Thank you, Adele. This is, um, for those of you that haven't seen this, <clears throat> this is a bunch of scraps that I have dyed various ways. Oh, the wallflower flower seat is often crowded, Shauna. So you're lucky if you were able to, you know, find a seat there. <laughs> That's normally where uh, a great many of us are hiding out. I mean, um, sitting and watching. We're not hiding, right? Oh, thank you, Brenda. I love doing the tea bags. And so I think I'm just going to do a, a simple concertina book. And then a, um, I've got this idea for the, I actually want to do the cover next, but I, I need to do the inside. Um, shoot, can somebody, how do you spell Kat's last name? Mona, if you're still around, perhaps you know who we're talking about. Or if somebody else um, could at least spell her last name so people can find her. Yeah, I need to get back to dying. If we're going to have rain next week, I'm not going to be able to open anything, um, open any, anything up for dying. But I got some beautiful, oh, I can show you if you haven't seen them on Instagram or Facebook. But um, And they look the similar, but really they're different. They are definitely different. These are all threads that I have been dying with plants in the garden. And I didn't do any fabric shit. I was just kind of experimenting to see if I could get color out of the different things. Okay, 
Yeah, very woodland. So this will be a journal cover and something. <laughs> So Kat, let me see if I can find Kat's thing real quick here for you guys. Uh, we have... Just a second here. Oh, it's she's got a funny... A funny name on her YouTube channel. Okay, there's Cat's channel. Oops, I missed some stuff here. Thank you, Martha. Yeah, the remote schooling, I'll tell you what, that would have been so hard. I can't even imagine trying to do that with my kids. One of my kids would have had no problem with it. The other one might have struggled just a bit. Or they might have both struggled. I would have struggled. So what did you, what did you have to do? Yeah, she's got um, a lot of really interesting videos. She's got... Uh, she does great tutorials, so I think you guys might enjoy her. So this project here is part of my don't worry about the end project, just do the work and enjoy the process because, boy, lately, <laughs> lately I have had to get out of my own way. I'm thinking too much about what's going to happen if I do this and what's going to happen if I do that. Yeah, remote schooling is for the birds. Absolutely. Well, you know, we can't all be experts. I mean, that's why we hired the teachers, right? Because they're the experts in the different topics. And if I had to try and teach anything to do with that darn new math, my goodness. Um, probably not going to be using the tea bags on this cover, but, you know, they would work. They would absolutely work. I think this one's probably going to have just a lot of slow stitching on it, but I could absolutely do something, you know, with these guys. These guys are going to go into another book. Uh, but I might, can never tell, you know, until you actually get to that point. <laughs> Tanya says her daughter is remote school and she's 13 and cleverer than me. So, yeah. You know, that's just it. Is It's just not my area. I mean, I could teach English. That's fine. Oh, thank you, guys. And thank you for all the, the wonderful comments you're leaving on the, the videos that I've been doing. As you know, the, the rambles are um, they're kind of new for me, but they're very freeing. Thank you, Brenda. They're very freeing, which means I should be able to do more because I'm not feeling a certain kind of pressure. So you have an essential things list, Nettie? What do you mean? You mean like essential stores that are open or only things you can only go out to buy certain things? It's interesting how each of the different countries has got different rules. I mean, we're all still here in a um, severe lockdown in California, but our little local market is awesome. All right, Sharon, take care. Good to see you today. Looking forward to you dyeing some fabrics. So I realized one reason I need to stagger doing my slow stitching is because I continually jab myself in the finger. And my finger needs time to heal. I need to find, I've, I've got some little um, sticky things to put on them. As soon as I use this thread up, I need to change to a smaller needle. This one's got such a huge hole, a huge head that it's really making some big holes. Didn't realize which one I had threaded. So you're only allowed to buy 
certain things. You could buy makeup, but not clothes. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. I certainly would not consider makeup an, an essential item. But I suppose for some people it is. So 12 journals made. You did one, did you do like one for each month in the Edith Holden book? That is really cool. Now you can just make the ephemera. Oh, you're going to go like crazy now. Martha says in Virginia, you can't even tell there are any restrictions. Everything is open. Stores are crowded. Wow. Yeah, Brenda, if you're going to walk around naked, you might as well look good doing it. That's right. Have your makeup, but no clothes. That is so funny. So, Lorna, do you tend to go back to the same kind of ephemera each time, or do you like to find some new ones? <laughs> yeah, Victoria, I hear you on that. No amount of makeup would make me look good naked. Yeah, makeup would come off with the mask. Of course, that's if you're in an area where people are wearing masks. One per month. Oh, nice. So people can go to Lorna and buy an Edith Holden journal for their birthday month. That'll be cool. And one of the reasons I like doing this kind of straight stitch is and I don't have to remember how to do it. <laughs> You make it up as you go. Okay. Yeah, I look at all the um, the sampler books that people make, and I admire them. It's like, oh, that is really cool. So they've got this book that's got, you know, all these ideas. And then knowing me, I would, like, lose the book and forget about it. And I don't, it, So I just need to do it as I go. Thank you, Martha, for beating up on Victoria, for beating up on herself. Yeah, we need to not do that. Good call. Not anytime soon, <laughs> Lorna. <laughs> Sometimes I put powder on. That's about the only makeup that I will do because of my rosacea. Sometimes my cheeks are super, super red. And people wonder if I've been drinking at nine o'clock in the morning, which is not the case. It's just sort of like having perpetual hot flashes, which then you add those in with the rosacea and that makes it lots of fun. Yeah. All right, Lorna, we will not be sending them over looking for their birthday journals yet, but you'll let us know when they're ready. <laughs> Lorna says she can remember the last time she wore makeup was 24 years ago at her wedding. Too funny. Tanya still wears a red lipstick under her mask. Yeah, I think it's if, if it's your thing, you know, and you're used to it. And, you know, there's some people that say they don't feel um, completely dressed if they don't put their lipstick on. Okay, good save, Victoria. Good save. Lala said the last time she used makeup was for mixed media. Yeah. That's right. Eyeshadow. Great stuff that we can get some. Um... Well, Martha's always worn makeup. Yeah, I wore way too much when I was a preteen. By the time I got to the teen years, I wasn't into it. But as a preteen, I wore too much of it because I was doing competitive roller skating so we always used to have to wear um, really heavy makeup so that the judges could see us, you know, from a distance from the, the rink. Oh, Shauna's blue cold body looks dead without any makeup. Oh, funny. Beth told her daughter to remember to smile even with the mask on. You are so right. They will see it in your eyes. Oh, welcome back. We're talking about makeup now. Yeah, stupid hot flashes. Every time I think, okay, they're done, they're not going to come back anymore, they pop back up. Right, let's see if that'll look good. We're the same age, Lala. Lala. 
Martha, that's it. You need to feel feel good about yourself. That's what it's all about. The hair thing for me, I, I will admit that I've gotten very used to not having to put my hair up or tie it back all the time, but I miss my long hair. Nettie says, uh, my hands are not steady enough for makeup. If I try to do full makeup, I'd look like an abstract painting. <laughs> yeah, I hear you there. With me, it's that I never figured out how to do it right. When I was skating, somebody else was already um, doing my makeup for me. So I didn't have anything to do with it. So I never know what to do. I have not painted on a tea bag, but I bet other people have. I can't paint. I mean, I can paint, you know, put paint on stuff, but I can't paint anything that looks like anything else. Lauren doesn't get hot flashes, but she free. Yeah, well, then the, you get the, the chills. That's not good either. Oh, in February. So you're a little bit older. I'll be 63 in July. It was a good year. No, 63 in July. All right, let's see. Oh, yeah. Never in the winter when they would be really useful, for sure. All right, let's come over here and let's find a needle that's not so... Is that one going to be any thinner? Yeah, that's a lot thinner, provided I can thread it. Midge is 74. She wears makeup every day, even when I stay home. Yeah, see, it's a habit. Adele's hair is 39 inches long now. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I miss mine. I mean, I had, I had about 18 inches cut off. I am right on the cusp. I am a on the Cancer Leo cusp on the 21st. Yeah, finger paint. Yep and spatter paint. Oh, Victoria, so you're like us, only in reverse. My husband's the one that's 14 years younger than I am. Oh, so we are very close. Yeah, isn't that a great pin cushion? I found that on Etsy. It is fab and it's really fluffy. And I just have a needle that went all the way through. That's not good. Look at that. Maybe too fluffy. <laughs> Woo. Let's not bleed on the stuff. All right. Let's bring this one. Which way do we want to go on this? Let's go the short way because I have a better chance of being mostly straight. I think it, I think they both have their, their use. Uh, Shauna wants to know what's better uh, to have a pin cushion or a needle book. Um, I need to make myself a needle book because I like being able to see the variety right there. And you probably wouldn't do what I did, which was just to shove it through. But I like having a pin cushion if I have to pin a whole bunch of things. Like, like this has got a bunch of pins in it. So if I'm working with this. Oh, you should be able to fast forward, Sharon. Fast forward and you should be able to catch up. Um, so if I'm working with this, I want to be able to have a pin cushion so I can just pull them out right away and not lose them all over the place. But I love the needle book for keeping all the needles straight. Yeah, Martha made a beautiful needle book. Needle book. Okay, Lorna, take care. Get some rest so you've got energy to go make all that ephemera. Brenda said, Grandpa was 25 years older than his last wife. She was younger than my mom when they got married. Yeah, my husband um, is closer to my son's age, but it works for us. It works for us. So, and that's all that matters in your relationships, right? Is it's got to work for you. Uh, 
Yeah, it's just it. I think the needle book for all the needles, because some things like like this one now, I knew I needed a thinner needle, uh, or I wanted a thinner needle. I didn't need it. But the pin cushion, sometimes there's just no substitute for being able just to do all the pin cushions, you know, pull them out in a hurry or put them in in a hurry. Yeah, exactly, Sharon. And, and now I've got all my book binding needles are all mixed up with my sewing needles, and that's not good. And then I've been, I bought a bunch of variety of sewing needles because I wasn't really sure what ones I liked for the different things. See, I would never get the pins back in the needle book. So I think the needle book will be for needles for me and the pin cushion for the pins. Nice, Victoria. Yeah, we've been to, been married uh, 21 years. It'll be 22 this year. You know, you just, you got to find the right match for you. Yeah, pin cushions look so cute. Yep. You know, it's just all about, um, you know, who's going to be a good partner to go through the, the life travels with, right? Yeah, I should use the green dream papers in this journal for sure. I might need to make a few more green kits because, you know, green, green is good. What I like about this pin cushion is I won't lose it. I've got the little, um, the tomato one that so many of us, our grandparents had and our grandmother had. Um, I've got that over by the TV, so it's nice to have there. I mean, I can never have too many green things. I really can't. And I can't remember, I, I, well, I don't think I had green clothes as a kid. I don't remember I did much of anything in green when I was younger. 55 years, Midge, that's amazing. I love hearing people that have been married that long. That's fabulous, congratulations. Because nowadays, you know, it's it's hard sometimes to say that you've been married that long. It's really hard. Oh, good. Yeah, I like that one too. I, um, I really, I'm taking a course. Well, is it a course? It's a coaching thing that I'm in right now. I really hope that I'm going to learn how to do better time management because I want to work on the digitals and I want to do more of the slow stitching and I want to make the videos and I want to do so many things and then I got to do stuff in the garden and I just so stink at the time management so I'm glad that you know at least I can do this while I'm chatting with you guys so I know that I'm getting the slow stitching done wow that is beyond wonky <laughs> so Brenda, Brenda's one of the youngsters, huh? That's right, Martha. They are always in training. Too funny. So true. Red was, I wore a lot of red. I wore jewel colors. My mom kept wanting me to wear pastel colors, but I liked wearing the jewel colors. Midge, I think you're right. It's all about compromising. I mean, any relationship, whether it's a marriage or a friendship, there's got to be a, you know, it's never 50-50. There's always, you know, 70-30 or 60-40 or sometimes it's 80-20. We just got to... <coughs> Lala, when my ex was trained, it was no fun. <laughs> Ideas of things I want to do keep coming in, and sometimes it's overwhelming. Absolutely, Debbie. Um, there's just, there are only so many hours in the day, right? And it's it's hard to pick whatever it is that's exciting us the most. And, you know, when we're in all these different Facebook groups and each one seems to have a different focus, uh, makes it really hard. 34 years for you, Sharon. That's fabulous. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Well, let's see. If I did the math, 21 plus 17 
is, wait a minute, what is that? 21 plus 17 is 38 plus one. So if I add up all my marriages, it would be 39 years. <laughs> oh. Tanya, it's the same thing. I The bright colors in the journals, I find it very hard to do. And I don't know why, because I loved wearing them. I hope I still like this after I put all the time. I love the colors, but I'm really hating my stitching. Yeah, Shauna and Debbie, if you've got to work part-time and... Um, Schedule in your art stuff in between everything else. It's hard. Well, Tanya, you just come come to my group, okay? <laughs> I just want you to come and share all your great ideas in my group. I love the clusters you posted today. So Debbie is trying to find a way to keep track of your ideas. So question, are you somebody who likes to write things down to remember them, or do you like to do them digitally on the computer? Thank you, Tanya. I'm, I'm frustrated with the stitching, but you know, this is my perfectionist really comes out. Terry, eight years is awesome. Midge is working 27 hours at the church. Wow. Yeah. That doesn't leave you a whole lot of extra time either, you know, and then our, our significant others want some attention. I have an ideas journal that has not had everything transferred down to paper yet. Um, so right now they're on post-it notes and then all the post-it notes are just shoved in the journal. And that's another thing I have to make time for is just to, you know, it takes time to organize the ideas. Yeah. Work, YouTube channel, art, crafting, Etsy. Oh yeah. Etsy. Oh, I've got kits that need to be posted, but I've got to do all the listing things. I really, I need to hire an intern. I need to hire somebody to do a bunch of that stuff. I don't want to do. Yeah, Debbie, I think just a big old journal that's just nothing but your ideas and jot them in. My problem, my perfectionist comes out when I'm trying to make my lists because I'm like, okay, I want to put them in this journal. Well, I used a different color pen. Well, the writing looks crummy. I, I mean, I really self-sabotage self myself all the time. Sharon, you know, the, the stitching I do on camera is just like the stitching I do off camera. It's so wonky um, and it's actually helping me let go of my perfectionism a little bit. I mean, you know, little Miss Perfectionist still sits in the backseat of the car, but um, she, she doesn't speak up too much. So I tell myself if there's a thing that I really... Um, hate when I'm all done with this, then I'll just cover it with another scrap of fabric. Yeah, Victoria says, I love being at the computer, but I hate the techie side of everything business wise. Yeah. Oh, swaps are really hard to keep up with, Shauna. I can't do it. Hey, Mary, you snuck in. I didn't see you. Happy Wednesday to you. And yeah, Lala, we are our own biggest critics. I have probably, um, I don't know, there's probably 10 or 12 notebooks. Literally, there's a stack. They're, it's over a foot tall. And they've been waiting for me since before Christmas to just try and get all the ideas in one place because they're all over the place. And I just want to get them in one place. And it's like I had one, I was going to put all the um, journal ideas in one and all the video ideas in another and all the kid ideas in another because otherwise I'm flipping pages too much and then I get sidetracked. It's just the doing it. It's it's the, you know, pull out your inner Nike and just do it. Yeah, and my perfectionist, I'm I'm really going to get rid of her this year. She's not speaking up as much. 
And, you know, the reason she's not speaking up as much is because I'm sharing more. And the more I share and all of you are so inspiring, then the easier it is for me to um, let go of all this stuff. The imperfections are one of the things I absolutely love about slow stitching, said Sharon. So it makes sense to try it this year. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, a great way to look at it. You know, and there are some stitches, of course, we can look at and we just, um, you know, we're, we're mesmerized by the beauty of their stitches. And it, I, I have a hard time. I can't look at them and then go do stitching. I love to look at them to get inspired. And then I have to go watch some other stuff that has nothing to do with stitching. Problem is getting started, putting together the parts and the plan. Yeah. Um, Oh, I'm just, okay, wait a minute. A couple things here before they go off the thing there. I love Victoria's idea for Sharon about doing the 52 tags challenge. Just do it off camera and do a show and tell. And yes, an idea book that, um, yeah, you never refer to because you have all those new ideas. That's why I'm putting mine on post-it notes and just shoving the post-it notes in there. Shauna wants to know, in making that cover, am I just doing one kind of stitch until the base is done? Yes, and I might decide that that's all I want, but I think what's going to happen... I can find a piece of fabric is once I get the stitching done, then I might come in and I don't know whether I'll do accent colors or not. Then I can do another thing over the top of it with some other stitches. All right, let's see what else here. Yeah. The problem is getting started and putting together a plan. I, that's why I did this like this, Martha. I just said, pick a color and just put all the scraps together for a journal cover. And I figured that would be, you know, a good place to start on this. And the more I do it, I mean, I would like to do more of these. So I have more slow stitch covers ready to go. Hey, Carmen. Oh, I'm so sorry you have been hit with COVID, but I hope you start to feel better again soon. Janet's doing the challenge. Yes. Yeah, show and tell is fine. Formatted flow journal with goals every day, Terry. That's fabulous. Yeah, this class I'm in is all about setting goals, and I need to come up with five big goals that I want to accomplish in the 12 weeks of the class. Martha, in case you're wondering what we're going to be chatting about later. <laughs> Catching up on the chat here. Yeah, I, I feel bad that I didn't do the challenge. I feel like I'm missing a few opportunities to connect with people. I feel like I'm always like, you know, a, a day late and a dollar short. And I need to, I need to let that go along with my little Miss Perfectionist. Ooh, Shauna's got ink. You got ink, then you're going to be printing out some stuff and you're going to have some playtime. Oh, I love that. Mona says some indigenous people who do beading on purpose throw a wrong colored bead into their work to show that they are just human and not perfect. I love that. There's something about that with the carpet weavers too, I think. Well, Carmen, that's good that you're able to watch videos and, you know, just kind of soak in all the juices. And then when you're feeling up to it again, you're going to have all these ideas racing around one tag a week. Yeah. I guess the thing is, is with me, something like tags, they're usually specific to a project. So I don't know. Yeah. I should probably I should uh, don't shit on yourself, Susan. Do not shit on yourself. I was hoping more people would pop into the um, start with the leaf challenge, but I can't compete with, with the big names. You know, Roxy's got challenges going. Anne's got challenges going. Um, it's awesome. And I'm glad to see people are creating art. And I need to just let that go. I am going to just move along, Susan, move along. Cause otherwise I start playing games with my head and that's not a happy thing to do. It is just not a happy thing. Takes you one day of printing to run out of ink? Wow. 
do you just not have a printer that gives you the high yield stuff? I have a laser printer, so it's nice. I can get the um, the high yield stuff, but I can't do some of the things you can do with an inkjet printer. Like I can't print on the vellum, which is very frustrating. Well, rusty hand stitching will give lots of character to your tags. Yeah, throw her out of the car. That's it. She is gone. She needs to go take the bus. Not that there's anything wrong with taking the bus. It just means that she's not in my car anymore. Oh, thanks, Janet. I'm glad you'll be doing the leaf challenge. And if, if nothing else, the hashtag makes it easy for me to find my stuff, my own stuff. Ooh, nice idea, the leafs and the tags together. I like that. You're right, Martha. That's why I said I, I need to stop that. It is not a competition, and I'm doing it for me. This is something I was going to do anyways, and I throw out the challenge because six months from now, somebody that, that was looking for something like that might find it, and it'll be perfect for them. You have two leaves sitting next to me here on the table. You're drawing a blank at the moment is what to do with them. You could do a rubbing. You could trace them with tracing paper. Um, yeah, rubber stamp leaves. I was going to get out some rubber stamps and stamp on fabric. And you can stamp on fabric and then um, stitch it to a tag. Oh, Sharon, when you're doing the reorganization, you can't really do much of anything else. And I need to clean up all my studio spaces again because there's stuff piled all over the place. I still don't have the island cleaned off yet. Lala says, my only goal for 2021 is to do a random act of, act of kindness every day, even if it's just a compliment. There is no such thing as just a compliment. Compliments are gold. It's wonderful that you want to do something like that, Lala. Yeah, Sharon, challenges that aren't so huge. Um, Rebecca from Dances with Pitbull said that last week that the challenge that she set for herself was to make 100 journals. That's like huge. That would be too much for me. I tried to do it when she did her 100 things challenge and I couldn't make it, couldn't make it work. Tanya says, I'm dipping in and out of the leaf challenge. I feel like I've learned a lot already and you're excited. Oh, good. Yes, Shauna, paint on fabric. Okay, Adele, take care. Happy to see you a little bit. Got Glad I could show you what was going on with your journal. You know, Sharon, I don't think that we ever get completely organized. I think it's, you know, we organize enough to, like you said, start a project. And then you come back to it when you need to again. I ended up pulling out so many things when I was trying to decide um, on the tea bags. And so the island is absolutely covered with stuff. And I need to put it all back together again so that I can sort out papers to go, you know, that I'm going to use for this journal that I'm going to do the tea bag thing with. Ah, oh, Lala, thank you. Gail is awesome at doing so much sharing for everybody. Thank you, Victoria. My weird throat is doing its thing. Many much cups of tea in my future afterwards. Shauna, me too. I've got some OCD happening here too. So it's, um, it's very hard to stop in the middle of organizing and say, okay, that's enough. I, I can now find the things I need. <clears throat> but otherwise, you know, people like us would spend all our time cleaning and organizing that kind of stuff. And then uh, we wouldn't get any work done. And that's what I did last year. I kept saying, well, I need to get this together. I need to get that together. Oh, gee, Tanya, look at this. I've got threads I'm going to cut. They're going to go on my little bag. <laughs> If you have space on your desk to craft, the rest is a bonus. Yeah. Well, you know, before I could 
um, set up for today because I had all my tea bag stuff out. I literally just swept everything off into one of my tubs. So Sharon said her mind becomes so overwhelmed with ideas that she needs to simplify her thoughts before she can move ahead. Imagination can be a huge blocker because there's just, you know, we'll be bopping around all over the place. We have all these great ideas. Tanya's got OCD. I think a lot of us artists have OCD traits. Victoria says, I owe you a massive thank you, Susan. Your pep talk about not overcommitting this year gave you the incentive to feel good. You felt guilt in 2020 for not being able to fulfill commitments. I am so glad that you are scaling back to something where you can find the joy in creating again, Victoria. I am so proud of you and happy to have had any kind of a hand in encouraging you. Debbie, yeah, organizing more than crafting. <laughs> Nettie, when I run out of room, I pull up a TV tray. That's great. Victoria, I can relate. Commitments you never should have undertaken for any variety of reasons. Been there, done that so much. Okay, Sharon says, cleaning and organizing isn't always my strong point. Mind you, if I had the perfect storage systems already in place, that would help greatly. Yeah, I think the key is not necessarily the perfect storage solutions, but you need to have a place for things. Like, do you know where all your thread is? Does your thread have a, co a home so that when you need a spool of thread, are you going to that place to look for it? I mean, like my paper, I've got my paper tower, this huge wall unit that's nothing but my papers. So I know that when I need paper, I can go to my paper tower and look for paper. But there was something, oh, my book binding needles. I had problems finding my book binding needles because they were never where I went for them. And I have this little sewing chest on legs that was my husband's grandmother's and it's got these three little drawers in it. And I have my all over there and I had a couple of other things I use for book binding. And I thought, why are my book binding needles not in that drawer? Because I would go to that place with the wax linen and the, the other things that I would, my clips that I would use for book binding. So I moved those into a place where it was logical for me to be looking for them. And that made all the difference. You know, so make sure that you have a home for everything. All your scissors, you know, where do you normally go for your scissors? Victoria says, I've dropped from three videos a week to just the one. Yes. Yes. Falling in love with crafting and filming all over again. Yes. Hey, I actually added music to a video yesterday. That was the first time I put any music in a video. Carmen wants to know what I'm making. Ah, this will be a journal cover. And so I'm just, these are um, pieces of fabric that I have dyed in various ways. And right now I'm just stitching it all down and it will be a journal cover for some kind of probably a nature journal. Big surprise, right? <laughs> Sharon says, I've needed to work my space for a while to be able to work out what my needs are. And that's led to the reorganization. But yeah, it is absolutely a work in progress. And it's the same thing is we, we think that we're going to do, you know, like, okay, I bought a bunch of scrapbook paper because I thought I was going to use it for making journals. And I realized I don't use scrapbook paper. I would rather design my own papers or, you know, make them myself. And so then you change. You don't need a place for the scrapbook papers anymore because that's not something that you're going to use. Or you save a whole lot of 3D objects and you realize that's not what you're going to do. I had plastic dog head, doll heads because I thought I was going to make dolls and I was going to cover the plastic heads with things. And I gave them away to another artist that does that sort of thing. Maria, hi, welcome. Are you all settled in your new home? I hope that you had a, a safe travels from one side of the coast to the other and you are settled. I did see you were posting videos a little bit again, so that's good. Thank you, Carmen. Yeah, I like using jars. I like to, it depends. You also have to learn what, what your particular style is. Like are, some people would be horrified in my studio space because they need to have things um, behind closed doors and in boxes. For me, if I put it in a box, 
with a lid on it where I can't see through it or it's behind a door. I forget I have it. So you're getting settled. Good. I'm glad you made it cross country. Okay. So memory decks is the same thing as a roller decks. Is that what it is? Because I always knew them as roller decks. I had two of them and I tossed them all in the goodwill like six months ago. I kept thinking I was going to do mixed media on them and then decided, nope, wasn't going to happen. Yeah, Carrie's got some stuff going on. So she she comes in and out when she can for like quick hellos. I see her over on Instagram a lot more. And Diane, I haven't talked to her recently. Yeah, need to see it, Tanya. I have my, my big tower in the studio has got the upper part is all open shelves and the bottom has doors. And I don't know why when I had the guys painted, I didn't have them take the doors off and, you know, just kind of fix the holes where the doors used to go on because really I need all the open space. Oh, Maria, I know that one. Yeah. When you're together all the time, it's hard to film. Yesterday when I did the, the second um, tea bag video, my husband had meetings. There was just no choice. And we haven't finished the soundproofing in his room. And uh, I just had to go ahead and do it and realize that if there was, if I wasn't speaking, you were probably going to hear him. Yeah. I remember the um, Heidi swap thing. Okay. So it's a hers is a memory decks. All right. So it's just the, the Heidi swap version of memory decks. I remember looking for her, um, punch or something years ago so that I could make my own cards. I was like, why? I'm not going to do that. And I, I bought, I got one of the really huge ones I thought was going to be really cool. And it's just, it, it didn't excite me. Uh, I, it was one of those things that I bought after watching a bunch of videos and it's crazy. Hi, Margaret. Happy to see you here. If you do a lot of genres, I don't know how that would work. A sewing theme and then a teacup theme. Okay, wait a minute here. I'm lost, Tanya. Yeah, Victoria, it's the same thing. My husband's my number one fan, but I think because they matter to us so much, it's hard. It's hard to, to do the kind of chatting that we like to do with our audiences when they're there because we're, I don't know. It's not like they judge us. They love us. So Tanya, when you're saying talking about doing lots of genres, do you mean videos or, or organizing supplies? I think I missed something in the chat. If I don't see it and you know, that's why I'm nervous about setting up the studio in the garage. Um, I tell myself that has to be just the, the messy stuff. I want to set up the, um, all my dying and things will be out there. And my, most of my, um, twigs and branches and leaves and that kind of stuff. If I move all my leaves out there and then I have to go shop in the outside studio, that'll give me like four shelves in here in the house. Yeah, I reduced my rubber stamps. I uh, sold like 75% of my stamps and that gave me some more room. Yeah, not being able to see what you have is a big issue. My mother-in-law saves me spice jars, um, and my husband and I go through a lot of spices. So I love spice jars because you can get a lot of, you know, my paper clips and brads and all that kind of stuff in there. And then I have a spice rack on the wall in the studio where all those jars are with things. And then I just found the cutest little um, mason airtight mason jars. You know, so they've got the airtight lid but they're only four ounces and I was going to use them for storing my inks. Got them at Ikea. They were really cheap, but unfortunately the lid being attached is heavy enough that it was going to tip the, the jar over. So now I need to go find uh, some other containers for my inks, but on the plus side, that means now I have these cute little Mason jars for acorns and stuff. If you don't have felt for your book, as long as your needles will slide in and out of your needle book, I mean, felt is nice and easy and usually inexpensive, 
But lots of people, Shauna, use material for needle books. It's just as long as your needles and pins will slide in and out easily. My trouble with the clear storage, because um, I love that too, is I had to have things that were mostly matching because it bothered me visually noise-wise if I saw all these different, like some things had blue lids and some things had pink lids. I didn't do that. And so when my husband was getting all the stuff for his office to reorganize it after we finally got it painted, he ordered uh, clear shoe boxes and then he ordered some other storage containers and the clear shoe boxes didn't work for him. And so I was able to grab all of those and they're perfect. Jewelry organizer with clear pockets. That's a good idea. I've seen the shoe bags as well. The clear shoe bags work. Maria is going to be in a one bedroom apartment for a few months. So a lot of her stuff will stay in storage, but you still have more craft stuff in your closet than clothes. Absolutely. All right, Margaret, we'll see you later. Oh, Shauna, that would be really cute. Yeah. Vintage designed needle book. Yeah, you know, just use the, the felt ideas and the other ideas you see for needle books as jumping off points. That's all. Yeah, I'm okay with the lids being different on the glass jars. I've got, you know, spice jars with black lids and some with green lids. Although I confess I would be happier if they all were the same, but I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, my shoe boxes are clear lids and clear bases and they're awesome because I can fit them on my shelves. I can fit them under the bookcases. They're just the right uh, length and width. Organizer has pockets on both sides. That's good. Yeah, somewhere in this house, I don't even know whether, they've got to be in the studio somewhere. I have some embossing folders. I don't have an embossing machine, but I have a couple folders for doing hand embossing cannot find them anywhere, which means that wherever I've stored them was not the proper place for them. Oh, those baskets sound cute, Victoria. Yeah, it's got to make you, I bought at our old house, I bought bright red baskets from my office to hold all my manuscripts and did the same thing. Every time I walked in the, to the room, I was just like, oh, yeah, cool. These make me smile. You love your Sizzix? I'm looking at either the Vagabond or the Gemini. I need to get an electric one. And I just haven't made up my mind as to which one. But um, I want it basically just for cutting shapes. I was cutting shapes the other day and out of just using punches. You know, and you can only do like two punches and then it um, it would all get, you know, the edges would get all torn up and the thing would get stuck in it. Now, green is my favorite color. The red just was, um, it was I don't know, I just saw those baskets at our old house. Um, I guess I was at like Cost Plus or something. And the red was, it just jumped out at me on the shelves. And I said, those baskets would be perfect for storing manuscripts in. So I think they're mostly in the garage now. Okay, I remember which ones you're talking about, Victoria. Sharon says her new um, organization system is making her smile whenever you enter the craft room, too. Awesome. Shauna's got the Vagabond, too. Okay. I've heard good things about that and then about the Gemini. And I just couldn't make up my mind. Yeah, Nettie, you, you, you do what you can with what you have at the time. You're young. Things change. I mean, I know I'm very fortunate. And even then, you know, I'd rather spend the money on um, other stuff. You were going to get a Gemini, but a friend said the, um, the plates bend very quick. Oh, okay. So what do you have, Tanya? So you love your gem. Oh, see, this is what happens. This is as far as I get every time I go back and forth between the Vagabond and the Gemini. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, whatever I get has to be because Gemini's Gemini is the only other one other than the vagabond that's electric, right? Unless you're going up to the cricket or the scan and cut, and I'm not going to do that. Hey, diaper boxes work. Cover them in paint, cover them in paper. I used to do that with my collage materials. Lots of cr cracker boxes. So which one do you have? So you've had no issue. So which between the Gemini and the Vagabond, is there one that you have to like hold your finger on when it's running through? I can't remember. Yeah, I can't do one that I have to, to crank. That won't work at all. So let's see. Yeah. The Vagabond 2. The Vagabond 2, you have to hold it down, Shauna. Okay. I only want something most likely for cutting shapes, you know, for cutting um, circles and squares if I want to do, and I want to cut them out of different materials. Um, like if I want to cut... Uh, oh, I didn't know this. the Sizzix had an electric. Okay, that's right. Okay, so the Vagabond 2, you have to hold it down. All right, I was trying to go back and forth between that. Okay, this is very helpful. Yeah, that's kind of why I've been dreading it. It's like, you know, do I want to put that much money in it to be able to... Um, just cut shapes, but it has to be electric. I know it can't be, it can't be a crank. And I, you know, I was trying to cut acetate the other day and I was using my punches and it was just exhausting. So I figured for my, um, yeah, if you don't need the, the um, automatic, it's not a big deal. Uh, all right. So I need to go back and after I finish that, I'll tell myself March that'll, that'll be in my March budget. Cause right now my next couple months, all my money is going towards this coaching stuff that I'm taking. Well, I'm glad that you're excited to use it more. I want to see what people are doing. I, you know, I don't anticipate wanting to get a bunch of other little die cut things. I have a dear friend. Thank you, Terry, who cut a bunch of great shapes for me that I can use but I really want to be able to cut circles and squares and things in different. Oh, Nettie, that's good. As long as you have that attitude. Oh gosh, Sharon. Yeah. If you've got rheumatoid arthritis, it's that you need all the help you can get with that kind of electric stuff. You want to save your strength for being able to do your painting. Wow, you were gifted a Gemini Junior and a Cricket. That's amazing, Lala. Which one do you like better? And Mary has the Maker, and it does a lot. And I would, um, I'd like to be able to cut uh, fabric that I have attached to something too. So I guess they would both do that. That's good to know about flipping the things over. See now right here, perfectionist Susan would say, you know, you didn't, you didn't pull this one over far enough and I'm just going to let it go because I know that when I'm done with all this other stitching, I can totally hide that part. Absolutely, Sharon. We need to um, look after ourselves and we look after each other. I mean, that's what I love about all of you is you guys look out for one another. The Vagabond Cuts fabrics. Okay, that's good. You know, the scan and cut sounds like a great deal if you want to do a lot of either your own designing or you want to do a lot of fussy cutting. I just, 
I'm not using that much that kind of stuff. I think had I learned about the scan and cut, you know, five, six years ago, I might have fallen into that. But I, it's just not the area that I'm going to do. Yeah, my right shoulder doesn't like fussy cutting either anymore. It doesn't like much of anything for any length of time. I just can't see that it's it's a ton of money for the fussy cutting. You need the scan and cut for designing. So I think if you want to do that kind of design work, then something like that is important. But so you guys are no help at all. I <laughs> I still don't know whether I what automatic machine I want. I just know that I want an electric one. Fussy cut is helpful for your arthritis. Interesting. Okay, more water. We have helicopters going out here. I hope that doesn't mean that they're fire spotting. Yeah, evenings are when I would do the fussy cutting too and I would much rather do the slow stitching. But I think what Victoria said is right. You know, you don't need to have bunches of them all cut out at once because then we forget what we have, right? Like I'm still cutting a bunch of Tracy's labels up and just using them as I go rather than trying to cut them all at once. Although it's nice to have them all cut at once, then you have to remember where you put them. I'm impressed with the scan and cut ability though. I mean, I, I remember when I first saw it advertised, it's like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, this is gonna this may be my my Wednesday project here for a little bit. So I'm trying to figure out what videos should go to the top of my list. If you guys have something in particular, I'm gonna finish the tea um, tea bag thing, but you'll need to let me know what things need to go to the top of my list. One day to do all your cutting, yeah. My trouble is, is, you know, depending on what I'm, if I had everything cut out, I guess you could sort through it. But I get sidetracked when I start sorting through all my um, things that are already, like when I was doing a lot of fussy cutting for magazines and I just had them all in these boxes, like I had all my birds in the box. It was a lot um, hard, harder to sort through all that kind of stuff when they were cut out because you're sorting through every individual image. Whereas if they're all still on the pages, then I could just flip through the pages. <coughs> yeah, Victoria, it's a lot of money for something that has mixed reviews and is probably only gonna get used a couple times a month. I totally agree with the wanting to have things ready to go when you're on a video. Ah, that's a good idea. Tanya says she cuts them fat and then finish them off when I use them. Jennifer McGuire has them all. Oh, thank you, Mary. That is useful. My goodness, Lala, you have quite the uh, crafting um, assortment of supplies there. Yeah, I'm not a logical thinker when I'm crafting, which is why it's it's kind of nerve-wracking to do those videos. It's like, uh, <laughs> I need to write down Jennifer McGuire. I'm going to forget. Let me write this down here. McGuire. All right, thank you. I take forever to make a decision on something like that. Yeah, and then the dyeing fabrics. Okay, so I dyed so much fabric, and it's in the closet. And then when I go to use something, it's like, uh, is it, can I find what I'm looking for? You know. And then I spent hours sorting it all by color and figuring out a way to organize it. 
And maybe I don't need to have that much of it done ahead of time. But then I enjoyed the process of the dying. Yeah, it's sort of like trying to figure out the prices for our stuff. You know, how much time would it save? How much time did we put into it? And is it time? I mean, like um, slow stitching, you know, it takes forever. It's a long process. But to me, it's worth the time that I'm spending on it because it relaxes me. I mean, I can really, really see it relax me. Um, if fussy cutting stresses you out, then the time, the money invested in something like a scan and cut might be worth it. Or if it causes you a lot of pain, and if that pain, I don't know about you, Victoria, but with my shoulder, if I do something that causes it pain, then I have to take a couple days of taking it easy, which means then I can't do any of the other stuff. Yeah, time that could be spent doing. Um, is there anything that's taboo in slow stitch? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, it depends on how particular you want to be. But I would say no, it is not. There is nothing taboo in sh slow stitch. Ah, so Lala said her honey started making t-shirts and signs when he had, after he had a stroke. And it was uh, your encouragement to get him started crafting that helped him recover. That's fabulous. Carmen says you have to take time to make the right decisions because of the investment. Yeah. Brenda said, I asked my daughter the other day what her views were on what I do, if it is art or crafting. She said both. Did she explain more? Okay, Sharon, take care. You know, uh, that was a question we had uh, a few weeks ago. Patty asked us, you know, um, is there a difference between arts and crafts? She said, crafting is preparing your piece to come into a piece of art. You're crafting your idea in your mind. You apply it to become something wonderful, even if it is a piece of grass or paper. <laughs> Sharon's going kicking and screaming. I love that, Brenda. That is a really good um, explanation. How did you feel about that? Did it settle well with you? I mean, you know, the, the discussion we had, I mean, the, any kind of uh, something that you're learning how to make by hand, you have to learn your craft, whether you're learning how to make wagon wheels or you're learning how to cook or you're learning how to dye fabric, you're learning a craft and then you apply it to the finished product to, to bring something that you're out into the world and it's art. Hey, Julie, welcome. Glad you caught the video, use what you have. We all need to remember that and not fall into the trap of, we just saw this on this video, I need to go buy it. Cause I just bought more stuff again, you know, this week, it's crazy. Midge, you had shoulder replacement in September. Oh, wow, and you're still hurting. Ouch. I understand that surgery can take a long time to recover. Well, Lala, I'm glad that he's been able to get some, um, some good out of that. That's fabulous. Hey, Penny. What are you working on today, Penny? Oh, good, Brenda. I'm so glad it made you feel better. Okay, Martha, I will touch base with you later and see if you've got time to chat because I need some of your clear headedness. Plus, you asked the hard questions for me, and that's always good. Hey, Glennis, welcome. Happy to see you here. We are just chatting while I'm stitching. This is just slow stitching. I'm not, it's not a, it's just a straight stitch. And this is going to be a journal cover when it's done. So these are just pieces of fabric that I, scraps of fabric that I have dyed a variety of ways over the last year or so. If they can call golf and pool sports, then we can call crafting art. <laughs> I think the important thing for us all to remember, and I say us, meaning me, and if it applies to any of you, great, but this is something I need to remember, is we, thank you, Julie. 
is that we don't need to put a label on it. We really don't need to put a label on it. Um, we put a label on it, then it gives somebody else the power to judge us. You're finishing up an art journal and a bear journal. Ooh, I hope you're going to post pictures. I love the idea of a bear journal. I'm glad the sun is still shining out there so I can go pick up all the stuff that's blown over the deck here in a little bit. I still hear the helicopters. I'm afraid that it is fire spotting time out there. Normally, if we have a helicopter for a short time, it's because there's been a car accident and they have to um, bring the helicopter in because we're in the mountains here so it can land someplace to take them to the... Uh, to the hospital, but the fact that it is continuing to circle out there concerns me. Shauna says, exactly, think of it this way. Every crafter is an artist, but not every artist is a crafter. I like that. Oh, good, you're gonna do a video, nice. Please don't let there be any fires over here. There've been fires at the other end of town. Yeah, Victoria, I don't like the label junk journals either. I call them handmade books. Handmade books, handmade journals. Hey, Tunder. How are you? Happy day to you. Ah, you're right here. You're right on time for you, right? It doesn't matter if you're late for when I start. Yeah, Victoria, that, that title, Junk Journal, it just really bothers me, but it's what people know things as. It's very hard. Julie says, I sorted through all my tags and pulled out the ones I wasn't satisfied with. I made them a while back and I've learned so much more. You want to make them better now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and we go through stages, especially if we do a lot of mass making, you know, which... Um, it's kind of fun to do when you're in the mood for something and, and it's something you'd love to do. Like I mass make my nature clusters, but uh, we find out, okay, number one, we get better at stuff and you make a whole bunch of something you realize, okay, I made a bunch of these, but it, it doesn't really go with my style or it's not something that I enjoy doing. It's not something that I want to use in my books. You know, we change, we evolve as artists and that's the way it should be. Junk journal gives you a chance to mention recycling and reusing. That's a good point, Glennis. And if for those people, I mean, I, I have nothing against the phrase junk journal. If that's what you're doing, if you're using a lot of your recycling and stuff for it, what's hard is that when people come and look at some of my things, I don't use, um, I'm, I'm not doing a lot of recycling. I'm big on recycling around the house here, but not in the books that I make. Kind of like calling embroidery slow stitch. There is a difference, but slow stitch is a hot topic right now. Yeah, Janet. What I don't understand. Okay, slow stitch is so popular right now, but then why is it so, why are so many people in a hurry to finish all their other stuff? You know, let's make this real fast. Let's make that real fast. You know, and then they say, oh, but I love the slow stitching. It slows me down. Yes, it's about the process. You know, and I think that's the hardest thing for us all to remember, Shauna, is that it's about the process because so many of us want to get to that end result. Like I've talked about in a couple of recent videos. Oh my goodness, Tender, it's the middle of the night for you. Nettie says, junk journal doesn't bother me because uh, she's quirky that way. Well, and because you do use a lot of recycled projects in your, your books, I, it just depends. Recycled art is how Lala's family members refer to the art. Yep. And there are a lot of people that that's exactly the kind of stuff that they, they work with. So it makes sense for them. Yeah, Janet, there's a, there's a rant of mine coming up. Let me tell you along that regard. 
Brenda says, how many artists can look at something and create a masterpiece? Okay, my question for you, Brenda, is do you look at the same things I look at and see that it's a masterpiece? Because I bet that's not the case. There's some things that you might call a masterpiece and I might not be a masterpiece to me and somebody else might call a masterpiece or might call junk and to me it's an absolute masterpiece. You know, so I, I think masterpiece is a judgment call. You know, you gather all the art cr critics in the world into a room, they're not going to agree. Yes, just be authentic and everybody will get there. Nettie was the one wearing camouflage and ties to high school. <laughs> Ooh, Penny calls them treasure journals because it gives them more value. I love that. I like that idea a lot. Yeah, it's, you know, masterpiece is a big word. And uh, I think that the trouble with calling something a masterpiece too, like if somebody called something of mine a masterpiece, um, it puts an expectation then the next time you put something out there, it's like, oh, you know, what, what if it's gonna, you know, it's not gonna be as good as the last one I put out there. Hey, Malaya. Go for it, Shauna. Ooh, you have a custom order to finish tomorrow, though. That's awesome. You're still quite the worker bee. Collect it covers pretty much covers it, yeah? You have to, you know, I mean, unfortunately, when we're trying to sell our stuff, you know, there needs to be some kind of a label so people know what to look for but it needs to be one that resonates with you. Junk in the trunk is great. Wasn't it Shannon Green that used to call it that? Junk in the trunk? I think it was her. Or no, or it was, no, it's um, Artie Mays. Artie Mays calls it the junk in the trunk. And she makes some of those great things from her junk in the trunk. How many can look at an old piece of a metal belt and see a closure for a book? Yes, exactly. Finished is a masterpiece. Absolutely, Brenda. I love that. And I want to finish. I'm okay with having multiple projects in different stages, you know, that are, are being worked upon. Yeah, thanks, Penny. I got there. Artie Mays. I knew it was one of those phrases we'd heard around. But just finish. Just finish something because there's that. The reason I want to finish now is that I realize it's going to be completely different. I'm going to be in a different space. If I put this aside and I didn't come back to it for a year, I would be in a completely different frame of mind to work on it. And even like um, this one that I'm working on, it's not going to end up being the same as the journals I did for the giveaway, because I'm in a different space now than I was back then. Although, gosh, this thing feels good. You cannot create the same thing twice to look exactly the same. Right. And that's another reason why it's art. You know, you're not doing mass productions. It's not like you're making a digital kit. We repurpose. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of my journals, um, may not be made of recycled materials, but there is a lot of things that have been repurposed or used in ways that are different than, than what they were originally intended. <clears throat> That's right, Tender. Shannon had the journaling by five series. Yeah, Amla, so many projects don't wanna pick back up because I don't remember who I was back then. That's it exactly. So that's got to be the, um, Motivation to to finish what we have now. Thanks, Lala. Those are my little lacy ones. And these are put together. I did. I'm going to set the green one aside here. These are all little tiny bits of lace that have just been cut off of um, my other stuff and just stitched until I'm happy with the way it feels onto a backing. And then I'll do some slow stitching on top of it. 
Yeah, Shauna, that's a good way of looking at it. Your limited edition kits. Exactly. Sorry, I just had a thought. I got to, if I don't jot it down now, I'm not going to remember it later. So what are you all going to work on after I'm done here? I've only got about 10 more minutes. You need to relearn your own headspace. Yep. Because we're always growing as artists, you know, we're learning new things, new, um, new skills. We're letting go of other skills. Yeah, even if you're using the same kits, and I mean, we, we've done this before where, you know, we've gathered and used the same kits and come up with completely different projects. And it's, it's pleasure. Uh, it's really surprising to me to see the different directions that people go. Can it work on forcing your children to eat? Yeah. <laughs> Hidden pleasures or memory keepers. That's another good way of calling your journals. Thank you, Tundra. Those are the um, the ones I did for the giveaway, and I think I'm going to be doing some more of them. They're very relaxing, not thinking about how I put the lace on, and it's a good way to use up the lace that um, maybe is an old lace, the polyester lace, because then by the time you add the other stuff on it, the they just it feels really yummy. Yeah, bedtime for a few of you. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get some some sustenance myself here. Get the energy up so I can go pick things up in the garden. Rubber leaf, rubber stamp leaves. Yeah, maybe I should do that. I should do my little stamping on fabric with my leaves and stitch some of those up. Hey, Ingrid, happy to see you here. Okay, you guys that have been talking about jelly plate printing and all that fun stuff that goes with jelly plating, you need to go check out Ingrid Blackbird's Blackburn. Gave you a bird name there for a minute. Ingrid's channel. She has got some fabulous videos on doing the jelly plate, and I just have not had the chance to get back to mine lately. Breakfast for Penny. So who wants to come over and help me pick up acorns? <laughs> I'm not looking forward to going out and finding everything. Okay, Lala, we'll see you next week. Mona, thanks for your help today. Appreciate it. Oh, Julie, you've been collecting your foliage and you bought a laminating machine. Well, that's awesome. I have only done, uh, I, I bought a laminating machine a couple years ago and I've only played with it a little bit. My trouble is, is the first batch of uh, things that I bought were glossy. I, and I do not like the glossy look at all. Yes, Ingrid, that's what I was going to do. My video on was on the printing on fabric. It is amazing when you print on fabric. Okay, Brenda and Malaya's kids are going to come and pick up acorns for me. Thank you. I have seen pictures of the burr oak acorns, Julie, but I don't have any around here. I've just got coast um, live oaks. Have you started printing on fabric, Ingrid? I haven't caught up in the last few videos of yours. I saw your beautiful leaf, um, just the uh, prompt for the, the video where you had your beautiful leaf where you said you almost cleaned off your jelly plate and then you got that beautiful print. Yeah, Debbie, I'll, how about I'll trade you, right? And then I'll come help you go um, do your uh, mudlarking that you're going to do. Is that right? Is that what it's called, mudlarking? Do I have the name right? I can't remember. Yeah, this would be good with the jelly printing. And, you know, then I've got my little, I don't know if you saw, you probably didn't see this video, but this was my tea bags and my leaves. And I could do the jelly printing on that, too. I know, Victoria. Thank you. Thank you. Ingrid, just make sure you add some um, fabric medium of some kind. You can just get the cheap stuff. 
and add some fabric medium to the paint so that uh, it stay the fabric stays soft. <laughs> All your oaks are dead oaks. I have dead pines. Um, my oaks are not not great. They've got a beautiful shape. The um, burr oak acorns have a beautiful shape. So Julie says she has dried burr oak acorns, cut off the end, removed the nut, groomed the cap, and made gift cups. Oh, wow. Okay, mudlarking. I did have it right. That, I just want to go beachcombing with you because you find the best stuff when you go beachcombing. Thank you, Ingrid. These are all scraps of fabric that I save up and, uh, you know, when I'm doing any kind of things with fabric and these little pieces. And then I just um, dunk them in my paint water, whatever I happen to be using or my ink or any of my leftover colors and just let them soak it up. They have huge leaves too. That's remind. Thank you for that reminder. We need to go since we had all these horrible winds here for two days. I need to go find where the um, big leaf maples are, and see if they've blown down some leaves for me. It would be so much fun to go do that beach combing together, Debbie. So Ingrid, this is my lesson in throwing my little Miss Perfectionist in the back seat of the car and telling her she can't come out and play because I've got all these wonky stitches. Hey, Beth, thanks for hanging with us. I'll see you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Tunder makes laminated pressed flowers and leaf bookmarks. Okay, you can go check out Tunder's channel. She has got some uh, a video showing you what she does with the laminated stuff. I have a feeling that the laminator is probably going to be something that we like um, uh, use for my husband's recipes. I'm probably not going to do as much with it as I thought I was going to do to start with. Because I'm really pleased with the leaves, um, the way they've responded to sewing. I don't know, Ingrid, if you saw this. This is one of them, but this is taking the leaves and putting, they're on tea bags, and this is just one step. They're not done yet. Putting a little bit of matte medium on them, and then you could stitch them. And so I'm thinking I'm probably going to be doing that rather than laminating, although I should at least do one thing with the laminator for my start with the leaf challenge. All right. We're coming up here on two. All kinds of, I, now Ingrid's not going to be able to sleep today because her brain's going to be going 900 miles an hour. She's a little Miss Idea Generation anyways. Brenda says her laminator is an iron. <laughs> did you do the thing back in school? I know that we did. We had um, wax paper and we would iron the leaves between the wax paper and made little things. I think we put popsicle sticks at the top and uh, hung them in the windows. They made like a stained glass thing. Julie says a Scotch thermal laminator was the best and only $18. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I need to get some matte things. I can use the glossy ones for my husband's recipes, but I don't like the glossy finish. Although, now that I'm saying that, oh, Julie, you just got my brain going. <laughs> Thanks, Ingrid. <laughs> Julie, you gave me something else to do this afternoon. I have to, okay, I have to go outside because if we're going to get rain next week, all the stuff that's flown all over the yard is going to be wet. So I need to go do the collections today. But now you just gave me an idea about how I can maybe use the um, glossy stuff. It used to be something too with, wasn't it with... Um, tissue paper and wax paper and an iron and you could get like a stained glass effect. I'm missing Jude today. I would be having her throwing everybody's channels up for you, but I can either throw up channels or I can keep stitching and I'm going to kind of try and get as much of the stitching done as I can. So 
so many leaf projects. That's exactly what I was going to play with, Shauna, was the alcohol inks. And I'm thinking if I do the laminating and then I do the alcohol inks. Yeah, absolutely, Nettie. You can laminate the photos for memory keeping and then you don't have to worry about anything, getting them wet and color running. Okay, Debbie, thanks for hanging with us. Looking forward to seeing what you post next. Victoria, that's another thing you can always do to dull the glossy is add some matte medium. I know, Shawna, we share a brain today. We absolutely are sharing a brain. You can you can have the brain for a couple hours, and then you got to send it back, okay? Yeah, I've been playing with my alcohol inks on a couple of other things. I owe Tanya a little bit of a tutorial on how I do something with the alcohol ink. So I might add that in there too. Hey, Tiffany. This is, you know, the wonky stitching. This is not being a perfectionist. Although to be honest, even if I was not doing this on camera, it would still be wonky. Okay, Shauna. I think she was talking about putting glossy medium or putting matte medium over um, the laminated stuff. So that is not going to be soft to start with. Hey, Karen. Yeah, press the foliage before using it so it keeps the color. Clear packing tape works great too. Have you guys colored your foliage though before you've done it? Because sometimes you can do that too if you have leaves. Okay, these leaves are nice and, and bright green still, but you can use your alcohol markers, alcohol inks, and you can add color to your leaves so that you don't lose them. Angela, you are out and about causing trouble. How are you doing today? Yeah, Tiffany, absolutely. Wonky stitches all the time, even with a sewing machine. Dyed with tea. Um, some things are dyed. Well, these are my tea bags. So these are tea bags that have the leaves on them. Let's see, or something. Here's your redwood for you, Ingrid. There's a part of my redwood. And then they're on tea bags. This fabric is dyed with everything from alcohol inks. This are alcohol, <clears throat> alcohol inks, distress inks, uh, leftover paint. Yeah, wonky, you know, if you do them all wonky all the time, then people never expect perfection from you, right? Tanya is miles behind because she had to pause and make lemon tea, but did you save your tea bag? <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. The matte medium will have a texture while the lamination is smooth. Yeah, the texture is kind of cool. I mean, I, you know, we're always gathering things to add more texture. Let me think what else I have. Um, let's see. I don't have any. A lot, oh, I might have. Wait a minute. I can show you guys. Since we have more painters here. And since Ingrid hasn't been here before. And I'm, my voice. Let me move that stuff out of the way. Here's some of the other things that I dye with all my leftovers. So Bombay ink. Uh, when, when you get to the bottom of the ink bottles. You've got all that stuff. Yep. Ink, ink, um, use your uh, gift cards, credit cards, expired credit cards, that kind of stuff. Here's one of my rusty ones. This is dyed with rust. So I just save all these little tiny scraps of paper or paper fabric. It's still in your flask. <laughs> And then you can take the dyed ones and stitch the tea bags with the leaves to that. And then these will be going in a book. And then there's the other way of using the tea bags. Yeah, the grunge. Little bit of grunge. A lot of grunge. Okay, there's a lot of grunge. <laughs>
Okay, trying to catch it. Yeah, tea bags are awesome. So Shauna, do you paint on the tea bags, right? Yeah, Karen and I share the uh, a lot of this same sort of love. Although you're nature girl too, Ingrid. Matt medium and clear gesso are your go-to, yeah. Well, gesso, I mean, who doesn't love gesso, right? There's nothing you can't accent with gesso. You, you know, you made a page and you hate the way it turned out, bring out the gesso. I have all those canvases in the garage and I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring them out and I'm gonna start gessoing them. Yeah, so Shauna paints on the tea bags. You don't like sewing. <laughs> this is my, I love doing the sewing on the lives because then I have more chance to follow the chat and uh, I don't have to concentrate that much because I'm not trying to do something perfect. This is another kind of sewing using up all the, the little lacy things, cutting the pieces of lace and just stitching them to a, cover and then I'll do slow stitching on top of them. Karen, you'll like this part though, maybe. Dying threads. I know you've seen some of those on Facebook. Yeah, gesso covers a multitude of sins. Absolutely. For my fellow nature lovers, I mean, you got to go check out Karen's channel. You got to check out Ingrid's channel. And their videos are very, um, especially Karen's, very cinem cinematic. Is that the right word I want? It was all I could do yesterday. I added like five seconds of music to the beginning of my video and the end of the video. It was like, oh, wow, that's the first time I've ever done that. I dislike the editing process so much. Yeah, I need to pick a color, Penny. That one's for Adele and... Uh, <sighs> I just, I don't know. It's probably going to end up being green, right? <laughs> yeah, leaving the stuff to dry on the jelly plate. I've got like, I don't know, six or seven jelly plates. And when I'm in that mode and I'm just doing a whole lot of printing, I just have stuff drying on them for days. I just go from plate to plate. Okay, Sharon, uh, Shauna's got vids on her channel of the thing she does with tea bags, so you should go check that out. Oh, Tiffany does stuff with nature too. I guess I've missed that. I'll have to go check out Tiffany too. I've lost my mods, so sorry I don't have anybody to put in all the channels for you guys right now. So I'm I'm not going to last much longer here, but check out um, Ingrid Blackburn, Karen Tamir, and Tiffany. Shoot, uh, Tiffany, if you're still here, type something so people can see your name. Hey, Victoria, you stayed up late tonight. Thank you, thank you. Looking forward to seeing what you do with your leaves and uh, your stuff for Tracy's challenge. Yeah, we'll see you in the group and you're not gonna miss next week, right? We're gonna nag you. Oh, you, you don't have any vids on tea bags? You have vids on your painting though, right? Thank you, Ingrid. Tiffany Solario. You're here just editing. Oh, just hate the editing part. I just want, you know, my videos, I just want to make them and then have them magically show up on YouTube. I would be so happy with that. I'll just make them and have them magically show up. It doesn't work that way, though, does it? Especially now that I'm having to do the voiceovers. Well, they should still go check you out. So you guys, my regulars, Tiffany and Ingrid and Karen, I met them all in the last class that I took with Lennon Bone, um, the stand up and stand out class. And so I'm really happy to see them there. Shauna does painting on tea bags and painting on lots of other things. <clears throat> All right, I'll go to the end of this thread here.
Tanya doesn't edit at all. I don't know, Penny. I don't love it. I mean, I was happy to put a little bit of music in there because I really wanted to get a title screen in, and you guys have put up with a lot lately. But I, um, I don't enjoy the editing part at all. I don't enjoy any part of it. I feel very clunky at it, and it's one of those things. I mean, I've known what to do for years. I just don't enjoy it. Oh, Angela, yay. I was hoping that you were getting energized to work. I can't wait to see what you do with that kit. I'm actually, uh, I don't think anybody's done anything with the red, uh, Eco Dream Red yet. So you could be the first. I've got two more Valentine's Day kits to get up, um, hopefully tomorrow. Well, I had to edit the, the last teabag one. Otherwise, it would have been like three hours long. So, But I really am not a fan of having to speed sections of things up. But I also didn't want to make it like a five-part series. So after I go collect all the stuff out of the garden that's been blown all over the place, I'm going to start on the pages for the book. And I think it's just going to be a small concertina book. You know, the voiceovers have kind of freed me up this last time. Um, I don't have a choice right now because the way my husband's work schedule is that we're both working at the same time. And the voiceovers have actually become my like rambling conversations that um, people seem to be enjoying. So that part's good. Titles, hate doing the titles. And I, I'm breaking a lot of YouTube rules, all the stuff that were taught by all the big names and I'm just kind of doing a rebel path lately. You dauber. Okay, translate to, to American for me, Tanya. What's a dauber? Sean has refused to voice over. Oh, Angela, good. They're all printed. Yay. Ah, Penny, yes. Love the results. I would agree with that. Karen's cooking and, oh, you Ingrid did it, right? So it's Ingrid's fault that you're here. <laughs> well, I'm just about done. Normally I go from 12 to 2 on Wednesdays. I know, so important, and yet I've made a shift in some things, and well, we'll have to talk later, Ingrid. I, uh, I don't know. I'm letting go of things. Maybe because if I stopped and tried to get it all done right, I wouldn't post anything at all. All right, I didn't get it done done, but I did get this part done today and some more on there. Oh, the oh, the dauber dauber, got it. <clears throat> Thank you, Tanya. I'm glad you liked the voiceover. Okay, I think that's about it. My voice is about had it for the day, a little over two hours. Thank you so much for hanging with me. And thank you to, um, Ingrid and Karen and Tiffany for showing up. Janet, you're still here. They haven't made you work too much. I appreciate you all hanging with me and sharing and supporting in the group. I want you guys to go out there and create some awesome art and share it, okay? And tell somebody else how amazing they are because you're going to make their day the way you make mine all the time, okay? I will see you next time. All right. Thanks, you guys. Bye for now.